So we've got a cannonball. We've got a little diagram over here that's pretty cool. So it's being shot horizontally. We get a lot of these problems with it shooting horizontally, but of course it's gonna arch down and land down here. We've got that kind of all figured out. And we know its height. The height there, it says, is 80 meters. We know that. We know acceleration of gravity, 9.8. Assume the cannon is fired at a time, t equal to zero, and the cannonball hits the ground at times of tg. What is the position of y of the cannonball at time tg over tool? So the first thing I did is I solved for the full time, total time. I did that because then I can easily figure out what the total times are um, in terms of the uh, problem. So total time, what did I do? I said, I uh, use the y equation. So y2, what did I just do here? I said y2 equals y1 plus v1yt plus 1 half at squared. Technically g, right? Acceleration of gravity. Now the acceleration, since it's, it's only moving in the x direction initially, the total um, speed in the y direction is zero. And so what's y2? y2 is zero, y1 is 80, and I can solve for time. Now the time will be the total time, right? That's the total time, that's not gonna answer this question, but if I wanna find it when it's t over two, <laughs> you take your time and you divide by two. And it's asking for what is the height, right? What is it asking for? Just care if I end the, the, the ground at the time. What is the posi y position? So then you're going to just plug into this equation. So if you will, to really answer the first bullet, you're going to say, again, y2 equals y1 plus 0, right? Plus 1 half at squared. Now, in this case, y1 is 80. y2 is our question mark. And our time is going to be whatever your time is divided by 2. And so that's how you're going to solve for the first bullet right here. The second says, given the projectile lands at a distance 160, so they've given us 160 meters from this distance to this distance. The question is, what is the initial speed of the projectile? Well, the good news is that's a very, very simple problem because in the x direction, x2 equals x1 plus v1 xt plus 1 half at squared, we know the total time from this box here, right? So I can take this time and plug that in here and here. But honestly, yeah, v1x, we're trying to, this is what we're solving for. This is our question mark. We know what x2 is. Isn't that 160? Yeah, 160. x1 is 0. And what is the acceleration in this problem in the x direction? It's 0. So we're just going to plug this in and solve for the original velocity. And then the last question, question C or bullet 3 or whatever, what is the y position of the cannonball when it is at a distance of d over 2? And so instead of plugging into the, the y distance, so I plugged it into this same equation here, right? So I said y2 equals y1 plus v1yt plus 1 half at squared. These are the y's. And so y1 is, where are we going to? Hold on, let's see. Your y1 is 80, and your, pardon me, your y1 is 80. Your y2 is question mark. You're trying to solve for that. The v1y, that's zero, so that drops out, plus 1 half at squared. Now, what t will you use um, at, at, when it's at a distance d over 2. Oh, you know what I had to do first? I so I had to solve for time. So when it's at d over 2, instead of 160, it's at 80. I then had to plug this into here and solve for time. Because I knew the speed that I found just a minute ago, and then I'll plug that t into here. So you have to do something here first. Yep.